So we spend a lot of time uh, listening to all sorts of great uh, talks about uh, the supply side of energy. And I want to spend the next 10 minutes talking about the demand side. So if you think about buildings, it's a place where we spend 90% of our lives. Uh, we live there, we work there, we play in them. And the quality of the space really determines our happiness, our productivity. So it's an important thing for us. And it's not just for us personally. There are other reasons to care about buildings as well. There are a billion people in this world today that have substandard housing. Uh, buildings also consume 40% of, um, of our power, which directly translates to 40% of our uh, carbon emissions. So it's a problem that we should all care a lot about. Um, over the next 35 years, the population will grow by another 2 billion. So we now take a big problem, and now it just became a little bit larger, or a lot larger. And so we have to figure out how to deliver high quality housing at very, very affordable prices. And that's the problem that we're tr trying to work on. So there's, there's a couple different approaches to this problem. So the first one could simply be taking sam uh, buildings that already work and just replicating them. And certainly in industrial manufacturing, that would be one approach. The second approach could be how we, so the, the problem with the the problem with that approach is that you would create this urban landscape that would be really dreary and sort of monotonous. And really, every site is a little different. So you probably want to, if you really want to optimize for the, for the benefit of, of that site, you really have to understand the local conditions. And so the other, the, other, the, other way, the other approach is to design everything on a site by site basis. And that's pretty much how we design today. It's very expensive. It takes a lot of time. And in order to meet the demand for buildings, we pretty much need like 10 million of them. And that's a lot of buildings to be designing one at a time. So we sort of challenged ourselves in the team. In order to meet the next 35 years worth of buildings, we'd have to pretty much design. Sorry. Uh, we pretty much have to design 1,000 buildings a day. That's a lot of buildings. And we can't simply design them by hand anymore. And not only that, each design has to be unique because it has to respond to its uh, specific context. And on, on top of that, it has to consume half the energy in order, to, in, order not to, uh, in order to keep the carbon emissions stable at, at where it is today. So take a look at this tree here. And if you look at what nature has done, it's essentially solved this problem. You take basically the genetic seed, an acorn, and you put it in its place and over time, it grows. It responds to the environment, the wind, the rain, the neighboring buildings, the light. And, and it sort of expresses itself very, very uniquely. And if you look at an entire forest, no tree is exactly the same. And so what can building design learn from nature? So you start with the seed. And inside the seed, we encapsulate the, 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 basically the algorithms what is the building supposed to do? What's its purpose? Is it a school? Is it a hospital? Is it a house? How does it keep itself up, the structure? And how does, how does it provide servicing? So for a tree, it's delivering water. It's delivering nutrients. For buildings, it's moving people around. It's providing uh, heating and cooling and ventilation. So all this, and electricity, so all the servicing. It's very much, top, top, topologically, it's very, very similar. And so, our approach has been trying to figure out how, what's the equivalent in, uh, in, in, in building design. And so we break the problem into two, two parts. The first part is how do we encode these algorithms into software so that it could be reused and improved upon and built and, 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 and improved upon over time? The second challenge is to figure out how to test whether the ideas are good. So we need sort of a virtual laboratory to understand how, uh, how a design performs under stress. So I have a demo for you, if I can get this switched over. So we're actually building this. So per Astro's point, um, this is actually a, a, a working system. And this is basically us showing you how we can use software design to building. So you look here, we have this context, the site that uniquely locates it on the world. We know how much sun hits it. We understand the weather conditions. 
And we, look at, we basically look at all the forces that act on the site, and we figure out how should the building respond, just like how the tree would respond to this environment. And so we would suggest a few ideas, and then we'd, we'd, then we'd then ask the user, what do you want to do inside? Is it a house? Is it an office building? Is it a hospital? And then through, that, through, the, through the use, we understand how many people need to occupy, what type, what type of servicing it would need. We can size those things. And everything, these are all just relationships that just ripple through the system, just like any other sort of organism. And we provide data for the, uh, for the designer. So if you look on the right-hand side here, we, every time we change design, every time we permute the design, we pr instantly provide data for you. This takes, we can design a building, an entire building in a few seconds. And just as a point of reference today, it takes probably dozens of people, multiple months, to generate one iteration. And so if, we want, if we're committed to designing better, more sustainably, we need data in order, and, and we need it quickly. And more importantly, we've reduced the latency it takes to really understand what the impact of particular designs are. And so that helps build intuition and then helps ultimately improves the quality of, of design. So, now we have a design, and we have to ask ourselves, does it work? And so fortunately, there's lots of really good simulated simulation tools that are already out there, and we've integrated those into our system. So structural analysis, um, energy modeling, daylighting analysis, those are all pretty much standard tools today. Um, and we can, under, under this sort of laboratory environment, we could also try to perturb it. So depending on the environment, you have to worry about extreme weather conditions, earthquakes, and so we can simulate pretty much all of that today. But there's one last part that we can't quite get. And what's the purpose of the building? Is to create great user experiences, is to make us happy, make us productive. And so we've been trying to figure out how to create a system that can allow us to understand the quality of a design as the users perceive it. And so with that, we're, we're looking towards agent-based simulation. So actually operate the building, populate the building with these virtual agents, and let's just see how it performs. We can, we can take the metrics, and then we can compare the designs against each, uh, with each other. So that's pretty cool. All we've done, we've done a little slice of the whole problem. And it turns out building design is incredibly complicated. There's lots of facets to it. It's highly localized. And it's constantly changing. And so as a small company, and even as a large company, we simply don't have the resources to keep it all up and running. And so we've taken some inspiration from the software movement and open sourcing. And so a critical uh, part of what we're doing is to create an environment where people are willing to share their ideas. And so rather than starting from scratch, you build upon each other's work. And then over the, over the course of time, the quality of designs will improve. We're also creating a whole set of maker tools that, that it, that's able to harness the sort of millions of architects and engineers from all around the world to collectively solve problems and share ideas with each other. And we think that's the opportunity for us to scale what we're doing. And ultimately, the goal is to design these 1,000 buildings a day, not, for our, not by ourselves, but engaging the entire world. So I'm incredibly optimistic with what we can do if we can democratize the knowledge and the tools of building design to address two of the most pressing problems for humanity, housing and, and, uh, and uh, climate change. Thank you.